This Master Chief helmet may look like it's plastic, but in fact, it is 10 millimeters thick stainless steel. Don't believe me, Chief? That was Master Chief's greatest hit. What in the world? Can you try a little harder, please? Put your back into it. Oh my ear. Do you believe me now? <laughs> that is rock solid. <laughs> Minus the visor, of course. I feel like bullets are gonna have a tough oh, time the, now. That's right, he just said bullets. I always wanted to make an actual bulletproof Master Chief helmet, and this package that just arrived on my front porch is two years in the making. Does this look like a Master Chief uh, shaped package to you, or is it just me? We know that shields play a big role in the bullet resistance of Molnir armor, but since this is, you know, real life, and we don't have any energy shields, we're gonna focus on making this helmet bulletproof with real life materials. But that's way easier said than done. Originally, we wanted to machine this helmet out of a solid block of steel. And we actually had a company lined up to do this, but unfortunately it fell through. So we had to put this bulletproof helmet idea into cryo sleep. But then two years later, I stumbled upon this video by my friend Tolga Olsligers, where he used metal 3D printing to make a bulletproof Iron Man helmet. His video is awesome. You gotta go check it out after this one. But after discussing this project with Tolga, Carlos 3D Print and Installation 00, I was pointed in the direction of a company called PCB Wave. PCB Wave mainly makes PCBs, but they also do custom 3D prints out of a variety of materials, but for us specifically, 316 stainless steel. The highest quality metal that PCB Waze prints on their machine. SLM printers have a laser that shoots down on a bed of atomized metal. The bed drops down just a little bit for each layer, and the machine adds another layer of metal powder on top of the existing print. Then the laser shoots down, repeat, repeat. It's a super cool process. With 10 millimeters of thickness, I think this 316L stainless steel is gonna do the trick. And they were down. To not only print this helmet for us, but also help sponsor this project by providing the helmet free of charge. And that is massive because this helmet was gonna be pretty expensive. But as you're about to see, it's expensive for a really good reason. So a huge thank you to PCB Waze for helping make this video possible. So they printed it, shipped it across the ocean directly to my doorstep, which is where our part of the project begins. Oh, oh it's so heavy. Oh my God, it's so heavy. My friends, that's what you call metal. This is a 10 millimeter thick, 316L stainless steel Master Chief helmet. I mean, <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my, oh it's so heavy. Dude, and this is hurts, this hurts. They said it was like 35 pounds and I could believe it. You can tell a little bit, like right here that there's some 3D print lines, but on the top, you really can't tell. Honestly, this is like almost better quality than any of the other 3D prints that I've ever made. Oh my God. They 3D printed it just like this. So that means the back probably will have some weirdness going on. Let's see what that looks like. That's definitely a little bit of sanding and dremeling can't fix. I mean, for real, this is not bad at all. <laughs> this could not be any better. This could not be any better. Now I've been going back and forth between sanding this helmet down and leaving it as a very polished metal-y look. The other option of course is to paint it just like this helmet so you can't tell if it's resin or steel. But we have to think of it like this. How is this helmet gonna look when it's getting hit with bullets? I'm thinking that if it's painted, when a bullet hits this, it's going to leave a nice little ding. And honestly, that will probably look the coolest. So I'm really leaning towards painting this thing, but we'll polish it up anyway. We'll take some good pictures because it's gonna look freaking sick, just steel. I'm just so amped that we have a stainless steel Master Chief helmet right in front of me. Let's turn this metal 3D print into a Master Chief helmet, shall we? So I started sanding down the helmet with 120 grit sandpaper and almost immediately I noticed two things. Number one, this helmet isn't as smooth as I thought it was. The sandblasted finish that it came with kind of covered up some of those imperfections. I didn't really realize that there were this many and then it's so totally okay, it's a 3D printed part, right? What are you gonna expect? It's never gonna be perfect. And second, I discovered that sandpaper ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> Metal's really hard to sand. <laughs> and those print lines are gonna take some real effort to remove. I need a tool to help speed this process up. Wow, so I got this die grinder from Harbor Freight, 20 bucks, along with some assorted abrasive pieces. And holy cow, it is immediately a noticeable difference. It is quickly cutting down those 3D print lines in the boxes. This is like the best 20 bucks I've ever spent. The die grinder did the trick, sanding down those print lines on the front to reveal a smooth, shiny finish. I mean, just look at that. Hardly any imperfections, and this is steel, guys. And I really like the finish that this is leaving, too. Nice and shiny, brush. But using the die grinder opened up a whole nother problem. Airflow. The only compressor that I have is a little five gallon pancake, and using it, I can only sand about 30 seconds until I have to wait another five minutes for the compressor to fill back up. And I'm embarrassed to say, but this little montage is uh, three evenings of me doing just that. Okay, we found a solution to our problem. We are at an undisclosed location that has a big old compressor right here. So I think uh, we're gonna make the quick work of it now. This thing should never run out. At least that's the hope.
melted sanding was absolutely amazing. Oh, it's such a difference. It's such a difference. And after I sanded nonstop for a couple hours, I could barely feel my hands, but we made some incredible progress. <sighs> Here's where we're at. We have this entire side completely polished, except for these small pieces that it's hard to get into. We're really, really looking good. It makes such a difference having this big old compressor over here. Holy cow. I really do feel like if I didn't have this, it would take me weeks and weeks to get to this point right here. All that's really left is this whole side that's really marked up. I haven't started on that side yet, but I think with a couple more hours of grinding and a couple more hours of polishing, we're gonna have a nice, nice smooth helmet here. I used a combination of three different grits to sand this helmet down, starting with the most coarse and gradually working up to the higher grit. I said earlier that I could barely feel my hands and that is no lie. After you do this for a while, your hands get numb and they kind of like continue to shake a little bit after you're done. But of course, dealing with that, totally worth it because pushing through allowed me to get this helmet to look like this. Cool that looks. Holy cow, look how gloss chrome that is. I just love the way that reflects. Just a little bit of buffing, it's insane. But now that this thing is chrome, it's time to do something that I've been waiting a long time to do. Let's put a visor in it. But first, one of the reasons why I stay so dialed in on long projects like these is thanks to the sponsor of this video, Raycon, and their everyday earbuds. Two weeks ago, Raycon sent me a pair of their everyday earbuds, and they are pretty awesome. Normally, I wear earbuds for roughly 50% of my day, whether it's listening to music, podcasts, or just nothing. Silence. And after using them for the last two weeks, I can say that these earbuds are super comfortable and have amazingly crisp sound. The active noise canceling feature has been super helpful to block out the world around me so I can concentrate. My old earbuds I used to charge every four hours. But Raycons have a 32 hour battery life and that has been super nice. They also have awareness mode, quick charging. The buttons on the outside are pretty easy to use. And I know I've said this already, but they're super comfortable. Raycon also offers a cool way to customize your case while protecting it at the same time. I'm using this sunset protector because it looks pretty cool, but it also stands out on my disaster of a workbench. <laughs> Stop looking. Although Raycon's quality rivals some of the biggest names in premium audio, Raycon start at just half the price as the other guys. So they're already an incredible deal before you factor in their massive Black Friday sale that is happening right now. Go to buyraycon.com slash impact props today to get up to 30% off site wide. That's right. You'll get up to 30% off over everything on Raycon site when you go to buyraycon.com slash impact props. And by ordering Raycons, other than getting an awesome product, you'll also be helping support this channel. So a massive thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Now, now, it's finally time to put a visor in this helmet. Well, this is looking pretty cool. So for this next part, I'm here with my father. Hello, Cameron. The goal is to figure out a way to attach this visor into this helmet in an extremely secure way. After all, we're gonna be shooting this helmet with bullets. So first we're gonna make some brackets out of stainless steel plates, and then we're gonna weld them to the inside of this helmet and then bolt this visor on. First, we cut the flat shape of the brackets out of a thin piece of 316 stainless steel. Next, we needed to drill and tap some holes so we could run a bolt through each bracket and clamp the visor in place. But but the bracket is so thin that it doesn't allow us to have enough threads to clamp this visor down using a screw in between the bracket and the inside of the helmet. So to fix that, we simply welded another piece on top, drilled a hole through both pieces, and attempted to tap it. And that's right, I said attempted. This definitely isn't my dad breaking a tap in the middle of one of these brackets. Oh no, he's definitely gonna kill me for keeping that in. Sorry, dad. And after he re-drilled the hole and re-tapped it, we moved on to the two remaining side brackets and repeated this exact same process. Weld on more material, drill, and tap. Until we had three brackets that looked like this. Pretty good. All right, we got the three brackets made. It's time to weld these brackets to the 3D printed helmet. I'm hoping that it will weld very similarly to regular steel. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. But anyway, we're about to find out. So very carefully, my dad welded each bracket to the 3D printed helmet. I'm not really sure what we expected, but it was actually fairly easy to weld the 3D printed steel. So with the brackets installed, it was finally time to test fit the visor. And I gotta say, it looks amazing. is something about putting a visor in a helmet for the first time. And then I realized that I forgot to tell my dad what we're gonna do at the end of this project. Well, what are you gonna shoot with? We're gonna go from a 22 all the way up to a 50 cal. Well, <laughs> the only thing that's not gonna go through it is the 22. Want a bet on it? It'll go through it. I'll bet you. 
A 223. A 223? <laughs> You're on, Dad. All right, here comes the tough part. I put so much effort into achieving this beautiful polished look, and honestly, I love it. But when we start shooting it, I want this helmet to look as close to Master Chief's helmet as possible in game. And because of that, I think we gotta paint it. But there is an upside. When we shoot this helmet, every single bullet impact will reveal a bit of that amazing metal underneath. One shot at a time. And who knows, maybe one day we'll get to see it shine in full chrome once again. Okay, so step one is to basically undo this entire polishing job that we just did. There's not enough imperfections on this helmet for the paint to adhere to, so we have to add some. It has to be done. Well, that was uh, depressing. The surface has been roughed up. Not too much, but just enough in order for hopefully paint to stick to it. I actually surprised myself. I completely thought that I was out of this paint that I used, this green. It was a custom mixed color. I was actually looking through my paint and I discovered this little vial full of FX plaid mixed paint that I used for that first initial run of helmets. So we're gonna use this, but this is actually step two. Step one is to paint this helmet black and then we'll go on to airbrushing with this stuff. The secret formula. I didn't think it was gonna be a secret formula, but since they don't make the paint anymore, I guess it is a secret formula. You know? Oh, this feels so wrong. Oh, I hate it so much. Oh, man. I applied the semi-gloss black paint as a base coat. And as soon as it was dry, I next taped off the areas that are supposed to stay black with this blue painter's tape. And then I broke out the airbrush. This little vial of paint was already thinned out. I added the green paint into the airbrush's hopper and started painting the helmet little by little. Because this airbrush is so small, it took a little while to get all the nooks and crannies of this helmet. And after a couple layers, this is what it looked like. And it didn't even take but a third of this paint. It looks pretty good, but we can't leave it like this. The most important step of this whole whole process is right now, battle damage. I used a watered down black acrylic to black wash this entire helmet. I also used some of the regular black acrylic to fill in some of the valleys, just where grime would set on a normal helmet. The last step was to install this visor. And finally, our bulletproof Master Chief helmet is complete. Here it is in all of its glory, 316 stainless steel Master Chief helmet. And when you compare it to, give me that. Yeah, when you compare it, you really can't tell too much of a difference. The visor colors are a little bit different. That kind of gives it away. But when you're really looking at this helmet, this actually might be the better one. Chief, you want to try it on? <laughs> so this is 35 pounds. So it's definitely not going to compress any discs. You good? How's it feel? <laughs> I think it's cutting off circulation in his brain. Okay. Oh. Well, maybe we, yeah, maybe we should just, here, I'll help oh. you. But this project is far from being over. We're out here with the guys from Ballistic High Speed. How would you describe your channel, boys? When it's fast, but you want it slow. I can check out, yeah. Yeah, especially with little uh, bullets going into things. In this case, this Master Chief helmet. You have three different Phantom slow-mo cameras. Four. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're a Ballistic High Speed fan? Name every episode. Ah! We're about to find out how bulletproof this Bulletproof Master Chief helmet really is in the next video. I know, I'm sorry, guys. That sucks. This is gonna be a part two. I know, you're like, we're getting pretty close to the so, end. When's the, when's the bullets start? So, Unsubscribe right now. Don't do that! Subscribe to us. Don't listen yeah, yeah, yeah. to that! We need you under a million and us over a million. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you guys for watching. We look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, which we're filming right now. Yes. So. All right. Cut.